Hello, this is Elliot Liggett, W6EL, and I wanted to show you a project I'm working on. I've got an ICOM IC736, and it needs a bit of work, and it needs some modifications. And so in this video, I'll just kind of overview what those changes and modifications will be, and uh, later we'll actually uh, do them together on YouTube. Uh, 736 is a pretty interesting radio with a lot of features. It's got an automatic antenna tuner, built-in power supply on the 736, general coverage receiver, which you can also make general coverage transmit. It's got CIV computer control, very, very basic, but it does have it. You can type in a frequency on the keypad on the front, which is very convenient. It's got a pretty sensitive receiver, as you'll see, and uh, it's got your uh, basic you know, features that you expect in HF radios, like a speech processor, AGC, uh, all the common modes, uh, passband, tunable, shift noise blanker, etc. It's got an audio notch too, which uh, works pretty well in my experience. When it was reviewed in 1995, and it was um, about $2,500, which is almost like $5,000 today, uh, these are the specs that the ARRL lab measured. And as you can see, the, the receiver is pretty sensitive. Um, that's the equivalent of a 0 0.07 microvolts on that uh, negative 130 dBm. So very, very sensitive on sideband, as you might expect. This is the built-in antenna tuner. It's a mixture of uh, relays that switch in and out components, as well as two uh, mechanically tunable variable capacitors. So I think it uses those for like trimming and fine tuning. It seems pretty good in my experience. It does get a little bit hot when it idles. I don't know if that's a design flaw or anything. Uh, there's also an ICOM repair memo that suggests uh, if you're going to open this radio up and work on the tuner to go ahead and replace these two capacitors. Uh, here's some common issues that I've seen with this radio. Um, one is bad caps in the PSU, and this is typically the smaller caps, not the big ones. And uh, it turns out mine has this problem. This is a very recent development here where it doesn't turn on if the radio is too cold. And I'm pretty sure it's the caps. Uh, bad caps in the PA board. I saw this on mine. Mine has a 10 watt PA board and these are the caps I pulled out of it. They were leaking all over the place. Uh, there's a bug from the factory with the frequency synthesizer, the DDS. It will hop down like a, a couple of KCs or something when you change modes. You can fix that very easily with a little resistor here. Uh, cracked screens seem very common on eBay, both versions, the uh, USA and the Japanese version. Expired batteries, you should expect that, and uh, dried out PA, final pace, that's pretty common, a lot of old radios. I do have some, some pet peeves about it. Uh, the stock mic is known to be pretty bad. The S meter is pretty dark. The receive audio definitely lacks low end, and I think we're going to be able to fix that, so uh, we'll see. The uh, knobs have really short shafts on the right-hand side, and almost all these used radios that you see are going to be missing a knob because the shaft is so short. Also, the CIV commands are really limited. You can't read the S-meter. You can't toggle the tuner. You can't even do PTT. You've got to use um, a different way to do that in the accessory plug. So if you're looking for a radio to computer control, this one's pretty limited, although it can still be enjoyable. The 736 and the 738 are almost the same models, except for the PSU, which the 736 has and the 738 doesn't, and uh, 6 meters. The 738 also lacks uh, 6 meters. But you can see in the 738 photo, there's a big spot there where the power supply is supposed to go. and That could be fun for some projects if you want to put an ADC in there with a Raspberry Pi or maybe uh, some batteries or something. could be an interesting radio. Uh, some similar radios are the 732, the 737, and the 737A. I don't know much about what the differences are, but um, I believe that 732 and the 737 are very similar, and the 730A is an update to the 737. Now, there is a Japanese version, which is the one I have here, which I got on eBay. It was listed as junk, and uh, that's a picture from it on the left there. Uh, the Japanese version has a fancier display and has different band rules, different limits on where you can transmit. And the Mars mod won't help you, but I'll show you how you can fix that right up. If you want to convert the Japanese limits to the standard limits, all you have to do is remove this part. 
and that's over here with the red circle on it. It's uh, not labeled very well. There's no label on the silk screen, but this is the component. And you can see here in the uh, schematic, there it is. There's no call out for this component. It's just some pads here on the, uh, this is not the schematic, I'm sorry, this is the artwork. In the schematic, you can see it. Here it is with the dotted line around it. So anyway, all you have to do is just take that part out and the radio will now have the standard band limits. There's also an M and an S version of the Japanese radio. The M is 25 watts and the S is 10 watts. And the difference is not in the power supply and it's not in the drive circuit, it's the PA board. The PA board is actually a different board altogether. It still runs off the internal you know, 29 volt power supply but it produces a lot less power and it's missing many of the transistors that would be on the 100 watt version. Uh, later, we're gonna try to replace that though with a 100 watt PA and see what happens. If you're looking to buy one of these, look on the back and this is where you can tell. If it has a fan, it's the 100 watt version and if it doesn't have a fan, then it isn't. Um, if you have an up close photo, you can look at the tag on the back and if you see the little S or an M back here, then it's a lower power version. And here's a, example of the PA board. Um, the 100 watt PA board's on the top and the 10 watt PA board's on the bottom. And not only is it missing the, the finals there for the full 100 watts, it's missing all the circuitry around them too. So you can't just add the finals, you have to replace the board. I've got a replacement board and we're gonna try putting it in and uh, see what happens. Probably also worth noting there's a little switch on some of the circuit boards that will give you the, the 100 watts instead of the 50. So if you happen to have a radio that's putting out 50 watts, you could try that switch. Uh, remote operation is possible. WFU, program I work on, does support the ICOM 736. It's got full duplex audio and it does PTT using the RTS, ready to send line. Um, I tested it with the XGG comms CIV audio adapter. It works pretty good. There is no S meter. The screenshot here shows an S meter. It's because it's hooked up to my 718 at the moment but it doesn't have that in the 736. There's no RF gain, there's no preamp attenuator, um, but you can change modes and you can change frequency, you can transmit and you can receive. So that, that alone is probably uh, what most people need for a radio like this. So here's mine. I got this on an eBay auction. It said uh, junk from Japan on eBay. I paid $350 for it. I got a $100 refund because it was mislabeled as being 100 watts and IC736 instead of 736S. And the seller was understanding and he refunded me some money for buying the wrong junk, basically. <laughs> um, mine has a cracked display and uh, it doesn't seem to work too well on six meters. I've got the power supply getting kind of intermittent on me and I'm missing a knob. So we're gonna go through all those modifications in uh, forthcoming videos, that'll be pretty fun. And we're gonna find out if we can put the non-Japanese LCD board that I also bought on eBay into a Japanese model. I think we can, they look about the same. And we're gonna try the 100 watt PA board. We're gonna to try to fix the low end audio, which bothers me because I listen to shortwave and I don't like it cutting off at 400 Hertz, which it does now. And we're gonna to try to fix the six meter VFO because it isn't locking properly. So stay tuned and uh, we'll check all this stuff out together. I'll put some links in the description below in case you want to see uh, some of the references. Thank you. Up here, it's, uh, I don't know how they're keeping up with it, I guess. So, anyway, uh, you be warping, warping, warping. Call me and told me that people that work for her bank uh, that have branches over there have lost their homes already, so, yeah, not good. Anyway, that's about it from here. We're okay here. It's just dark. <laughs> so W6BDW from KJ6WJ.